Introducing the Use Effect Hook, the second most useful of all the React hooks in my opinion. This lesson will explore how Use Effect works as well as how it stacks up against traditional React lifecycle methods. This hook is the hook that performs side effects in functional components. In the introductory lesson of this module, I defined side effects as functions modifying variables outside of their scope. And up to now, only class-based stateful components could cause these sorts of side effects with methods like component did mount and component will update. Use effect allows for these same sorts of actions, making API calls to fetch data, updating the DOM, subscribing to event listeners, but it allows for them with more modularized, fine-grained control than was previously possible. Here is another sample of use effect code, and you can see that I have the actual code opened up in code sandbox over on the right hand side of the screen and the working code on the left hand side so you can see what it actually does. In this example, which we're going to walk through, I've got two ways in which the use effect hook is most commonly used, which also lets me compare it to how a class based component might perform these same tasks. So if we look here at our example, Right now we see a dog picture, which only updates on page refresh. So every time that I refresh the page, we get a different dog. So this is essentially what component did mount does in class based components. So the first thing you'll notice about this example is that the adorable dog photo loads on the component render from a free public API named dog API. So if you'd like to see it, you can post it in here into your browser tab and see more cute pictures of dogs. But this is the API where the information is actually coming from in this async await fetch. So if we refresh the component in the example, like I was showing you before, we see cute new dog photos. So this is what the first use effect hook in our code is doing, this one right here. So how does use effect actually work? What does it do? It tells your React component that it needs to do something after render. So React will remember the function you passed and call it later after performing DOM updates. In this effect, we're fetching and setting data, but it could be doing any number of other things. So by placing use effect inside of the component, it lets you access the image state variable or any props right from that effect. There is no need for a special API to read it it's already in the function scope. Hooks heavily embrace JavaScript closures and avoid introducing React specific APIs where JavaScript already provides a good solution. So let's talk about the makeup of the use effect hook and then we'll examine how it applies to our examples. Use effect has arguments. The use effect hook doesn't return any values of its own, but it instead takes in two arguments. First argument is required and the second is optional, but it is highly recommended at all times to prevent the component re-rendering on every state change, which probably is not going to be an efficient use of your browser's memory. So the first argument that use effect needs is the callback. This is the required one. And this is the function that we want the hook to actually run the effect itself. So that looks like this. We import use effect similar to how we imported use state and we have this little function of use effect and this one is just console logging hello world so by default the effect stated in a use effect hook runs when the component first renders and after every update but this is customized easily to only render when you want it to which we'll cover next so the second argument that use effect takes is the dependency list and this is optional but it is very highly recommended. This dependency list allows us to tell React to skip applying the effect only until certain conditions are met. In other words, the second argument of the use effect hook allows us to limit when the effect runs, and it gives us that more fine-grained control that I talked about in earlier scenarios, the reasons of why React hooks came to be. So by simply placing an empty array as the second argument in a use effect, this is how we tell React to only run the effect on initial render. This tells React your effect doesn't depend on any values from state or from props, so it never needs to rerun after it has initially run. So let's look closely again at that first use effect in the example. It uses its use effect hook just like this. So if we look at this code, here is our entire function being defined, fetch dog image. It goes out to the dog API, 
it waits for the response to come back, it pulls the message back out from that, and then sets our image URL constant to that message. And then we call fetch dog message here, and right here is our dependency array. So let's talk about what's going on in this code. First, we have declared the image URL state variable above the use effect hook. If you look over here, you can see it right there. It's an empty string. Then we tell React we need to use an effect. We pass a function to the use effect hook. This fetch dog image function we pass is our actual effect. Inside of the effect, we fetch the dog image URL using the browser's fetch API, but only when the component first mounts, then set that returned data to the image URL. We can read the latest image URL inside of the effect because it's in the scope of our function. So when React renders our component, it will remember the effect that we used and then run our effect after updating the DOM to display that cute dog photo for us after the function returns and updates the image URL state. If I were to do the same thing in a class-based component, it would look something like this code. So here is our component did mount if we were doing this in a class component. Once again, we have declared the image URL up above this using this.setState, and we have our component did mount function. We once again go to the dog API, pull out the message, and then set the state. So I do need to point out, because you are going to run into this, that async await is a little different within useEffect than with lifecycle methods. You'll notice in the examples that I'm showing you, which are both asynchronous and API data fetching actions, that useEffect itself does not contain the async keyword. If you try it this way, you'll see a console error. The long and short answer for avoiding this, straight from the React core team, is making use effect async encourages race conditions and bugs, so don't do it. The easy solution for doing asynchronous functions directly within use effect is to create an async function inside of the hook and then call that function right after creating it. You can create it outside, but it is a prescribed best practice to put it inside of the use effect so that it's easy to identify and determine where it is, and then this error will be solved. Whenever you need to do some sort of an asynchronous data action with a use effect, just create a function inside of it and call the function. So that's why you see fetch dog image being declared and then called, or our other one, which we haven't gotten to yet, of get random cat fact being declared and then called. So if the example above was only setting state or doing something else that's not asynchronous and promise based, the extra action of declaring and then calling fetch dog image wouldn't be needed. The async function internal to the use effect hook is only needed for asynchronous operations. And with that, it's time to move on to our second use effect example. This one has different dependencies triggering it to run. The second use effect that we're going to look at is use effect when a particular variable changes, like a component did update. So the second use effect is triggered when you press the button underneath the dog photo loaded on component did mount with the text of flip the switch right down here. So each time this button is pressed, depending on whether the state variable show cat facts is true or false, either a dog photo or a cat fact will be shown. The second use effect differs from the first though, because every time show cat facts is true, the cat fact displayed in the DOM is different. If you press the flip the switch twice more, you'll see the same dog photo when show cat facts is false, but a new cat fact when show cat fact becomes true again. So here we go, press it. We get a cat fact of a cat's normal pulse is 140 to 240 beats per minute. We flip back, we still have our great puppy picture. We come again, cats with long lean bodies are more likely to be outgoing and more protective and vocal than those with a stocky build, interesting flip back, our puppy is still there. So this is happening because the use effect responsible for fetching cat facts from the cat fact API has a different dependency array than the first example, which had an empty dependency array. So let's look at our code. So if we look at this use effect for getting random cat facts, we have declared it the very same way that we declared our fetch dog API. We're going to our cat fact API we're pulling out our fact and we're setting it. And then we're checking that if show cat facts is true, get a new random cat fact. The thing to note though, is that inside of our dependency array, we also 
are watching the show cat facts variable. And every time that changes, this use effect fires off again. So this example is using a common use effect performance optimization where you tell React to skip applying an effect if certain values haven't changed between re-renders. Because otherwise, as I mentioned earlier, if there's no dependency array specified, every single time a re-render of the component happens for any reason, this use effect hook would rerun. And since the show cat facts value is in the dependency array for this hook, every time show cat facts value is changed to true via a click of the flip the switch button, the use effect hook runs and calls get random cat fact to fetch a new cat fact to display in the DOM. Here's the inline function attached to the button that updates the state of show cat facts in our JSX. So we have our button right here. We have our on click. We have set show cat facts, which we take in, and we take whatever value of cat facts is currently there and flip it to the opposite. That's one way to handle Boolean values in React. So if other state values change, like image URL, this would not cause this function to rerun because it knows it only needs to update when the value of show cat facts changes. If we included image URL in here as another dependency, then every time image URL updated, it would also cause this function to fire off and the DOM to rerun. So here is what that same action would look like in a React class component. Once again, we have declared cat facts as a state value using this.state. We have declared the show cats Boolean as well. So we have our get random cat fact function. It goes out and it does exactly the same thing. What differs though is that we have this component did update with pre props and pre state. So if show cat facts current state does not match show cat facts pre state and show cat facts is true, then get random cat facts fires off. And once again in the on click, we set the state of show cat facts to the opposite of what it was before. So similar, just a little bit more code. So just like with the use effect function above that relies on the show cat facts Boolean to be true before it goes and fetches a new cat fact to display, this component did update function checks if the state of show cat facts value differs from its previous value, which it should because it's a Boolean flipping from true to false with the touch of a button. And if the value is both different from its previous value and it's equal to true, component did update will call the function declared above get random cat fact. Now imagine for a second that get random cat fact isn't the only thing that needs to be triggered when some state or props variable within the component changes. Imagine increasing complexity as well as various unrelated logic that will quickly make this life cycle balloon in size as it attempts to keep track of the values of multiple pieces of state within this component. With functional components, instead, you could have multiple separate use effect hooks, very similar to what I have here. This use effect for fetching dog images, this use effect for getting random cat facts. And with separate hooks, each has different independent dependency arrays. So keeping track of values unique to them and only running when the values they care about changes. It might sound like more code at first, more use effect hooks instead of a single component did update or component did mount, but believe me, being able to separate these pieces of logic out really makes the code easier to write and easier to understand. It just takes a little practice. So use effect gives the feeling of increased performance. Unlike component did mount or component did update, effects scheduled with use effect don't block the browser from updating the screen. This makes your app feel more responsive, and the majority of effects don't need to happen synchronously. If they do, there are some more obscure React hooks like use layout effect to help handle those scenarios. I've linked to that in the documentation, and I would encourage you to go check that out. Honestly, I've never had to use it though. Here are some final use effect hook tips. Use multiple effects to separate concerns. One of the best things about use effect is that now actions which have nothing to do with each other don't have to be grouped together into the same lifecycle method. And actions that are connected but need to run under different conditions can be grouped together instead. So optimize performance by skipping effects. 
You can tell React to skip applying an effect if certain values haven't changed between re-renders. To do so, pass an array as an optional second argument to use effect, like we discussed above. If your effect doesn't depend on any values from props or state, an empty array will indicate to only run the effect on component mount. You can even pass more than one argument in that array if multiple things should trigger that use effect to run. Well done making it through this next lesson. Use effect is not the most intuitive hook to grasp, but once you get the hang of it, you won't want to go back to using lifecycle methods, I assure you. It too is a very, very common hook that will be used in many ways throughout this course as we update our sample application. Now there's a few other hooks worth taking the time to talk through in these lessons before we take advantage of them in our app. The next hook we'll discuss in the following lesson is the use ref hook.